All right, so while I'm waiting for the metal to get bent, center keel section to come back, I thought I'd um, maybe dive into some of the details I'll be dealing with eventually. Um, one of them being um, fuel pump install into <clears throat> the tanks. So these are tanks that I bought from RSR. Um, they look pretty good. The, um, you have your center section that keeps uh, the volume of the fuel from, you know, the momentum of the fuel pushing the boat around. Um, <clears throat> so you got your divider in there. Holes on the bottom for the fuel to equalize and all that. They're notched out in the sides. Um, and that center piece has, you know, notches that go into them. So you clamp that together and I assume you weld that up and they stick out so you should have some some metal there to, to TIG weld with. Um, so I was kind of curious, I pulled the, the pump out of the VXR and uh, this is it, this is quite the, quite the component. It appears it has a filter down in the bottom and the fuel pump's definitely down there. And you have this, uh, this line here, it actually goes up, up into there, which I think is actually the suction line to the pump. Um, and then on the left side there you see another another fuel line. It, it just goes all the way up to where you connect the fuel line on the top of the pump. And um, you know this is the original ring. But um, this is the weld-in ring I got from RSR. Um, everything looks good there. Uh, you know this, this cap here, this is what this piece here gets welded into the tank. Um, and this is your, your mounting ring, tighten it down on the seal. Um, what was concerning me a little bit was just the height, because I put it in here, you know, I'm going to have another, um, I don't know, 3 sixteenths of height on this with when I put the lid on. Um, and this is spring loaded, so it actually, actually goes down and puts pressure on the feet on the bottom of the tank. And that's the way it was in the jet ski tank. And at the bottom of the jet ski, they're just like little nubs st sticking up down there that those feet would go between um, on the bottom. And they're just plastic uh, feet with rubber. So this being spring loaded, you know, looks like it's designed to actually do that just for stability. So it, you know, the, the weight's not actually I'm um, putting pressure on things, but um, you know, look at this bottomed out all the way. You know, I definitely got more than three sixteenths there. It's, it's, um, it's over a quarter, probably close to three eighths, not quite. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to increase the thickness of this. Either get, you know, another um, just cut out another ring. Kind of sucks for welding though. Be nice to have that thick piece welded straight to the tank. Um, or um, figure on cutting off the feet <clears throat> at least enough to where I can get that little bit more drop. You know, I probably need an eighth inch or better. You know, and that's where it'll like bottom out. And these, these things just kind of stick in there. You know, got little pins in them. I'm thinking I can probably just cut those off, you know, 3 16 or something, you know, and gain that, that much space. I think these will actually go back in far enough to, to still use them. Um, so, I mean, that's better than trying to raise raise the tank up to the up to the metal ring or adding in a spacer um, just so you have that directly welded to the tank and there's a there's a lip right here you know that's machined into it and I would think that you'd want to cut the hole size to where this actually fits into the tank that means it would have to go down even further so if I don't do that, I'll just you know just have to sit on top of the tank. You know, the hole being smaller, probably the inside diameter of of the ring itself. 
there's no reason for it to be that many bigger you know and then have that sitting flush on the tank you know and then weld it in i decided not to weld the tanks right now because um i really need to see the boat <laughs> you know um once the the holes together you know see what the placement of the tanks actually going to be and then and then determine where the bungs going to go in the tank because you have a crossover line from one tank to the other um they'll have a they'll have a fill connection at some point um which i haven't really figured out yet you know the, the original tank had a rubber boot coming down to the tank which means i'd need another fitting you know preferably weld in everything so i'd need a you know a, a fuel fill cap size hole is probably like inch and a half hose on the on the jet ski but um so there's a lot to figure out there and placement of the tanks is going to determine where all that stuff goes you know to once i get a look at what's whatever you know everything that's going around the tanks where i'm going to want to come off the tanks so i'm like well there's really no point in welding these up right now you know it can be done later but um you know, if you do have wave runner jet ski this is a vxr 2016. Um, this is the fuel pump setup if you've never had it out um, and this is where the uh, sending unit goes um, little little rheostat for the, the fuel gauge and it just slides down in those brackets there and it kind of clips in and then this actually goes behind it and those those two little uh, bottom sections there you squeeze them together pull it out and then um, the other piece with a little bit of, of force pops out and you have to do that before you can pull the float up through the hole because this is sitting off to the side so this has to come off and then you pull the large section out and then you can remove the rest of that so um, I thought it was one of these things where you just pop this this um, arm off of here but it's secured on the back with the um, kind of a lock ring and so you can't get to it until you actually get this off and then once you got that off there's no point but also there's a spring there it's got a metal piece in the back that actually makes contact with the um, you know the varistor there so as it moves it changes resistance um, and I, I tweaked on that, I bent it a little bit, it looked like I got everything back in place, you know, but best thing to do is just don't mess with that. Um, just, just leave all this stuff here intact, you know, and, and pull the whole thing out, no big deal. So hopefully that'll work when I get it back in. It, it looks like it's making contact, everything's good there. So fuel tanks will just sit there until I get get to the point where I know where they're going and, and where everything's going to get set up at. So now the jet pump, um, you know, I pulled the, uh, the bearing and the coupler out of the boat. I um, went ahead and I got the shaft in there. It's a shortened shaft I got from RSR and um, everything looks like it lines up good. The, the splines inside are matching well. Um, I went to bolt this on, it wouldn't bolt down all the way, and then I quickly realized there's actually there's actually pins in there. So obviously on the boat there's holes for those pins. So um, you know I figured well there must be a purpose for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, and go ahead and drill those out so that those pins will have a hole to set in. Um, you know, and then there's a rubber ring in here and and this smashes down against the rubber ring and that's the seal to keep the water out of the boat from that that section you know and obviously there's a shaft seal right here um, now on your boat this sits the other way um, this this is the top on on the jet ski I mean but for this intake you, you invert it so there is a grease port down here on the other side um, you know as long as there's nothing stuffed right to the side of that when I'm all said and done you know, it's, it's not hard to get to. It's kind of pointing out to the side a little bit. There shouldn't be a problem getting a, a grease gun on that. And then um, the other thing is, this here is a, the adapter plate. It's for the Yamaha adapter plate I got from RSR. 
you know, and that adapts the uh, the pump to the the transom and the intake. Um, so you know, and they've got it all figured out to where you know they know the shaft shaft length and all that, and they have them cut down and whatnot and resplined. So this little piece of metal in here is right now simulating the, the transom. It's just gonna have a spacer. Yeah, I'm simulating the transom so that everything's essentially sitting where, where it would if it was in the boat. Um, but you know, this right here, you know, your impeller's right in here. So this is after the impel, this is after the impeller. Let me back this up. So this being after the impellers, you know, this, this section is actually under pressure and this, this is your uh, pickup for your um, engine coolant water, cooling water. Um, you know, it, it comes, comes through this housing here and then the, the adapter, there's a hole here and a, a screw hole. Now the original pump had a screw hole there as well. So I'm not really sure, but what I was looking at was, you know, I got to figure out a way you know, maybe RSR actually sells a component for this. I don't know. Um, but on the inside of the boat, I need a coolant water hookup for the engine. You know, and that's it. Um, it looked a little small, and I went and compared it with the hoses in the boat. You know, the the fittings that that coolant line hooks up to, and it, you know, if it's any smaller, it's like a sixteenth or something. It's just not that. So I'm, I'm sure it's fine, but um, you know. This this flat portion here will be against the transom, you know, intakes inside the boat. So on the inside, I need a fitting here to hook my, my engine cooling water up to, hose up to. So still got to figure that out. I'll probably get a hold of our star on that, see, see if they specifically had something. Um, you know, I bought these from them. Um, you know, this is for a through the boat type thing. Um, obviously not for that application. This is another one that I don't even recall what these were supposed to be for. I mean, it's been a few months since I bought all this stuff. So, um, you know, you have water that comes out the side of the boat. You have a connection that comes out the side of the boat. And you also have that little um, thing that spits water from pump pressure up off the back of the boat. It's just kind of an indicator. So... You know, those could be possibly used for one or the other um, of, of those components. Um, but the one that comes out the side of the boat, it's like, a, you know, I got the components and they were just kind of bolted into the side of the, the jet ski. So if I was going to put that back on the boat, you know, I, I could just use those components or plastic. But um, so anyway, um, you know, one of those like this one here could be used for this connection right here, it's, it's on the, uh, up by the nozzle. Um, and that was for your automatic siphon, um, to siphon water out of the bottom of the boat. So I could use that, that bunk connector there for that and go ahead and use that, you know, that siphon bilge type thing. You know, I guess there's no reason not to, you know, it's not really a big deal, but you know, I had in mind to actually put an electric pump in there for a bilge. Um, so everything here looking good. This is the the welding ring I bought from RSR. It's a one piece, not a welded, not not welded pieces to make the ring. It's a, it's made out of one piece of metal, and it's it's a half inch thick, and. Um, and this goes on here, um, you know, the grate actually sticks three-eighths of an inch below it. And um, they sell another weld-in ring, but it's, it's for boats who are not putting the UHMW on. So I assume that they're actually considerably thicker to match the grate depth. Um, or, yeah, anyway, however it works, is the, the grate will stick down. So anyway, this, this here is taken up by UHMW. So, you know, that's what you don't want sticking down below your UHMW. Obviously, you know, it would catch pretty easy on things. So, of course, this is the front side. So forward motion, things are moving that way. And 
here, you know, you have a kind of a ramp coming off of it, so nothing can catch it there, but it just seems like you don't want whatever you're heading to all the pressure to be on that. Um, but yeah, that's the critical part that, you know, um, just as far as matching the motor up, you, you tack in that ring, then you mount on your, your intake, um, you know, which is what I intend to do, and then place the transom and the marks on the outer hole section has marks where the transom goes. And then you need the intake to, to uh, match up with the transom at the right angle as well. <clears throat> um, and then have your coupler be at the right height and angle for your engine to be able to line up without bottoming out on the boat. And just premier, <clears throat> um, preliminarily, um, I put this, this flat, you know, did some measurements, came up with from the bottom of the boat, should be about five and seven eighths to the center of this, this coupler. And right now I've got the, uh, the engine sitting on blocks. Um, and I've got probably close to three quarters clearance on the bottom of the engine. I got, you know, I got plenty of room as far as that goes. I, you know, that would be enough, plenty of room to get those, those uh, rubber pads that go underneath there, you know, mounted in. Um, and right the way it is, it's actually tilt, tilting slight, slightly back, which, you know, there's an angle to the pump you know, downward coming out the back from the flat part of the hole. And I've got six inches, so to the center of that. So it really doesn't look like it should be that hard to, to get all that mashed up. So when I get the uh, center keel back, I'll tack on the outer hole sections and then um, start looking to line things up. And, you know, I have to, I didn't have them cut the hole in the, in the center keel. So, you know, I have to figure out the, the distance, you know, from basically set the, um, the intake on the bottom of the hole, center keel section, match it up with the, <clears throat> with the transom, and then mark it out, cut the hole, tack in the, the weld-in ring, remount it, recheck it, you know, and if everything lines up, then you can weld in the ring, you know, but at that point, once I got that that ring tacked in, the intake bolted on. Then I'll drop the motor in there. I'll see what my clearance is, you know. And then if the transom matches the intake mount, you know, the intake and the angles are right, you know, it's on the marks, um, everything looks good, and I'll just weld in the ring, you know, and finish that off. Um, and then continue putting the boat together. You know, and pull the motor back out. Um, you know, it may be easier to actually build the motor mounts before you put the sides of the boat on. You know, as we get the hole put together, there's no reason you can't actually do your motor mounts without the sides on, because, I don't know, it just seems like it'd be easier access not to have to lean over the sides of the boat. So trying to think ahead on some of this stuff, you know, if anybody's watching, they got any ideas or thoughts, you know, it might be helpful. Um, I'll be waiting possibly for another week for that, that metal to get back. So if I see something on my YouTube messages, I'll look at it later on.